In this video, we're going to take a look at ecosystem interactions. So by the end of this video, you will be able to identify the three types of species interaction. And you'll also be able to identify the requirements for an ecosystem to be in equ equilibrium, taking into account something called carrying capacity. So let's begin by talking about what influences population growth. Well, population growth is influenced by three things. The first is biotic factors, so food. Abiotic factors, such as soil, so we need good soil conditions in order for our producers to grow. And then finally, interactions with other species. Now, in terms of an ecosystem, these interactions are happening all the time. And they can be either positive or negative. So it depends on what that particular interaction is. And so they can be positive or negative for a species, and that's going to cause fluctuations in the population numbers. Indigenous people describe these interactions as connections. So that's kind of an interesting uh, terminology that's worthwhile knowing. And then finally, when something changes in an ecosystem, the change is going to impact other parts of the ecosystem as well. So let's take a look at some of the different types of species interactions. Now, species uh, and organisms in a community are going to interact with one another in the, the environment in many different ways. And so biotic interactions can occur in three ways. It can occur by predation, by competition, or by symbiosis. So we're going to take a look at each one of these and go over what they are and take a little bit of a deeper dive. So let's start with predation. Predation occurs when one organism eats another organism to obtain food. So kind of like our lizard here eating the ant. We would say the prey is the organism that's eaten. So our prey is the ant and our predator is the organism that eats the prey. So that in this picture would be our lizard. Now a really kind of neat natural phenomenon that's worthwhile um, knowing about is mimicry. And so some prey have evolved to mimic or resemble other species in order to avoid predators. And a great example of this is the monarch butterfly. Monarch butterflies are poisonous and they're less likely to be eaten by predators. And so the viceroy butterfly has actually adopted itself and adapted to look like or mimic the monarch butterfly. But eating these is actually not poisonous to their predators but they're less likely to be eaten because they look like a monarch butterfly. Now let's talk, take a, talk a little bit about the predator-prey relationship. And um, this graph here just shows the relationship between the snow hair, snowshoe hare and the Arctic fox and what's happening with the number of animals over time. And so the relationship between predators and their play, prey can influence the population of both. So for example, if the population of the prey decreases, so let's maybe take a look at the drop in the population here of the green line, which is our prey, then the red line also drops as well or decreases. And that's because if the population of the hares are going down, then the population of the foxes are going to go down just because there's a lack of food. Because the predator relies on the prey as a food source, their population levels are strongly influenced by one another. Okay. And so if the prey population rises again, so in this part of the curve here, for example, it's rising again then the population of our predators also rises again. So it's really neat and interesting to look at the relationship between the two. The second type of interaction is competition. 
So competition is the interaction between two or more organisms competing for the same resources in a given habitat. So this could be between members of the same species. For example, like our picture here, we've got two male elephants that are competing maybe for the same mate to try and reproduce, or they can be between members of different species. So raccoons and skunks both compete for the same food in a lawn. And so those are a couple of examples of competition. Now think about this. Can you think of some resources animals or plants might be competing for? I'm going to leave you with that question there and let's continue. So we also need this term carrying capacity because this actually goes along with competition. The size of a population that can be supported indefinitely by the resources in the ecosystem is called the carrying capacity. And so what happens is the population for a particular ecosystem will increase. And so it goes up here, but it reaches a point of equilibrium. And that's where it's, it becomes this straight flat line, which shows that the population is not really changing over time. And that's called the carrying capacity. So this is really the number of individuals that the environment can sustain. And so when a population grows, each individual is getting a smaller share of the resources and it will hit a point where uh, we've maxed out our competition. Eventually no more individuals can be supported and the population stops growing. So we, we hit this point of equilibrium. All right, our final interaction that we need to take a look at is called symbiosis. And it's actually broken down into three sort of main types of symbiosis. So symbiosis in general is a relationship or an interaction between two different species in which members of one species live in, on, or near members of the other species. In mutualism, um, both species are benefiting. And so they form um, this relationship where they both benefit and they form this symbi symbiotic uh, partnership. So for example, birds and alligators do live in a mutualism interaction because the bird gets food from the alligator's teeth and the alligator gets its teeth cleaned by the bird. So that's a nice example of um, a mutualism interaction. The next one is commensalism. And one of the species is benefiting, whereas the other one is not affected whatsoever. So uh, barnacles living on whales is an example. Um, sucker fish that attach to sharks get a free mode of transportation, some protection, some scraps of food, whereas the shark is largely unaffected, uh, unaffected. So that's another great example. Finally, the last type here is parasitism. And so one is benefiting and the other one is harmed. Um, so this is, for example, ticks that live on dogs, you know, ticks are getting the benefit of getting the blood from the dog, um, and, and as a food source, um, but the tick itself can spread diseases to the dog. So things like Lyme disease can be spread. So that's it for this video. We've got our three types of interactions and then three types of symbiosis. Now let's move on to our next task.